Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I'm here playing with my new CWT uh, Multibal 5500, brand new uh, high-end balancer that we got. And uh, you know, if you know much about me, you know that in fairness, last few years or so, I've said a lot about, you know, whether or not I truly understood or believed in how the value of balancing crankshafts really mattered in the performance of the engine. And, and a lot of that's because it's so much uh, opinion in the marketplace. And so for me, I really struggle to associate real value with, uh, you know, we balance the crankshaft to so many grams or, you know, to so much uh, ounce inch tolerance or whatever, because I can't see that when it's running in the engine. How do I know all the variables that are affecting it with cylinder firings and oil splashing around and all that kind of stuff? So I didn't feel like I ever could truly um, measure and manage those parameters. And so when I went to the Engine Performance Expo early uh, early this year, I spent a bunch of time talking with Randy Neal of CWT, who's incredibly knowledgeable on the subject. And I was honest with him. I just said, you know, I'm a little skeptical. I just, I just don't know. Like, does it really make a difference? And in that couple of short days of talking with him, I kind of went from like, eh, balancing's a little junk science to, man, I gotta have one of these. And the reason that I wanted to have one is because ultimately this is how I can measure and get data and and then be able to manage something. If I can't measure it, then it really doesn't matter. I can't do anything about it. So if we can't measure it, we can't manage it. So I've been playing around with this uh, obviously really nice, um, well-developed crankshaft. This is one of the billet Winberg pieces for our small block forward program. And look, I'm not the world's most knowledgeable person on balancing. I'm just kind of getting started. So I hope I do Randy a service here and say all the right things. But I just kind of want to show you my perspective on why I think it matters now when I didn't really before. And primarily, that all has to do with numbers. And so now that I can come up with a bob weight, I can put it on the crankshaft, I can spin the thing. You know, one of the things that I liked immediately was that when we go in here to set things up in the, in the uh, balancer here, I can go over here and create a standard for the tolerance instead of, eh, you know, we just use uh, as long as it's better than 10 grams or we use, you know, two ounce inches or whatever these kind of quote unquote industry standards were. It made sense to me when we talked about how depending on the RPM you want to run and the length of your stroke and the weight of your, your components, the value of tolerance that you should allow should be changing. And that made sense to me. If I got a big long stroke and a big heavy crankshaft, it's naturally gonna move around farther when it's out of balance than something with a really small stroke would. So being able to set up a customized ISO standard, ISO is pretty reliable. So based on the ISO standards, we can put in the weight of our crank and the RPMs we're gonna run and we can have it calculate what our allowable out of balance would be, meaning, you, if it's worse than that, we can do better. If we can get the number smaller than that, there's not really a lot of value uh, proven over time historically uh, by increasing that. So I went in, I can put in, for example, the weight of my rotor. Now that's my crankshaft, my balancer, my, you know, anything that's spinning, your, your flywheel or your flex plate, probably even your, your uh, torque converter in the transmission, all that kind of stuff. But I use a value here of 75 pounds and I'm gonna use pounds as the metric, ints, ounces here. Now my service speed is gonna be whatever you think the maximum might be. If you went all the way to hit the rev limiter, in my case, that's 12,000 RPM. I know it's crazy, but that's, that's how we roll. So then it says, do you wanna apply this calculation? I'm gonna say yes. And it gives me my tolerance here. 0.118 ounce inches is for this particular package. So I don't wanna use that same standard as an impossibly hard to get to standard for some stock GM 396 or 454, you know, whatever kind of engine, big block forward, Chrysler, they shouldn't all be to the same standard because they don't have the same weights and, and out of balance properties. But so that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type in 750 here because I know I have a pretty small amount of imbalance right now. I have a 1360 gram bob weight calculated on this thing. So I'm just gonna hit go here and I'm gonna let it spin. Now it'll take a minute, it'll get up to speed. It's nice and quiet while it's running. It'll get up to speed, and then it's gonna give me the amount of imbalance. And so we'll let it do that here. It says analyzing, and it should be just about done. So we'll go ahead and let it do that, there we go. Okay, now it shows up, my left side is 0.115, which is under my 0.118, but my right side over here 
this point, 6.47, or I'm about 6.675 grams out of balance. Now, to be honest, that's pretty darn good for most applications, but not quite good enough for this application. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click first spin here. And uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this around till I find out where it is in terms of coupling. By coupling, I mean how close the impulse is out of balance on this side versus that side. Remember our counterweights, they should be opposing each other exactly 180 out. But we have a little bit of tolerance there. If I can be between about, oh, maybe uh, 100 and 50 or 60 over here and maybe like 200 over here somewhere on here on the bottom I'm looking pretty good right now I'm TDC on this side I'm 188 which is only eight degrees out of perfect coupling there um, but it, it's gonna need some grams now here's what's interesting so if this is at TDC I would need I'm, I'm heavy here I would need to take weight away but I don't want to go in here and just start hacking on my beautiful crankshaft so I want to simulate a little bit of what that might look like so I'm gonna turn the crank over to 180 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is grab this tiny little bit of clay. Now, just this amount. Now, this is a little more than my 6.675 grams. This is actually about um, 8.6 grams, but it's, it's tiny. Look at that, just clay. Um, the reason I'm using a little bit more is simply because um, I'm spreading the clay out a little bit as I'm putting it on. So not all of that weight is being affected exactly uh, at the center of my point. So I'm just gonna put that on here, do another run and see what happens. Hopefully the clay doesn't fly off while we're doing this. Sometimes that happens. So I'm gonna let this run. And obviously I've been playing around with this and kind of got it close. And I wanna show you what I mean by having numbers that I can quantify to say that it's better here as soon as this is done spinning. So we'll see here. So now I'm all the way over here at 0 0.105. You can see it is balanced to tolerance. I'm only 1.082 grams out of balance on the right side, 1.083 grams out of balance on the left side. And if I bring this up, you can see that it is very well coupled here, 180, 190. I can play with this by moving that weight around and, uh, and try and move where it's coupled. But for now, I'm gonna hit last spin here and I wanna go over here, I'm gonna hit print. This is what's great. So now I get a printout of the amount of unbalance that I have, okay, if I just set the crank statically, is pretty fixed. So at 1,000 RPM, I've got about 1.185 on the left side, and I've got 6.675 on the right side. That was when we first spun it. I've been able to reduce that to, the, it pretty much stayed pretty close to the same on the left, 1.083, but now all the way down to 1.082. So I went from about six, almost seven grams of imbalance in fairness, that's nothing in the real world, but I brought that all the way down to a little, just above one gram of imbalance there. Here's where it gets interesting. So as that weight spins, the centripetal or centripetal force multiplies by the square of the RPM. So that little tiny piece of clay that I added, here's what it did for me. If you look over here, I know it might be hard for you to see, but at 10,000 RPM, which is gonna be below what I intend to run this engine to, that 6.675 uh, grams, that little tiny bit of weight that's out of balance, is causing a force of 115 pounds to be applied to the crankshaft at 166 times per second. So the frequency is you're taking a jackhammer with a 115 pound end on it and going bang, 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 bang at the exact same spot every time the crank goes around 167 times a second. Now again, those are pretty small numbers in the grand scheme of things, but watch, that little tiny piece of clay that I put on there, reducing me about five and a half or six grams. Now at the same RPM, I've only got 18.6 pounds of force at that same frequency. So we went from 115 down to 18 and a half pounds. That to me is a measurable difference. And now I can work on my crankshafts and make them really small. I can go out and race them. I can get them back and look at the bearings. But to me, there's no way to avoid the number of saying, I can hit my crankshaft with 100 pounds or 500 or 1,000 pounds, or I can hit it with less than that. That's gotta be better. So why did I go from balancing is junk science to man, I gotta have a beautiful new balancer in my shop? Because of the numbers. I can measure it, so now I can manage it. We'll be back with more as soon as I learn more to tell you about.